Good morning, members. This is the meeting for the Bills Committee on Employment Amendment Bill 2014. This is the second meeting, and today we're going to hear deputations. A total of 19 deputations and individuals will be speaking uh, today, and we've also received five written submissions as well. So in the interest of time, perhaps we should ask the deputations and the administration team to come in, please. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I would like to remind the deputations that please speak into the mic. And if you need translation or interpretation, you can put on your earpiece. Channel 1 is Cantonese version, Channel 2 English version, Channel 3 Putonghua version. Another thing to remind everyone. Um, your speeches and written submissions are not protected by the Legislative Council Powers and Privileges Ordinance. To my right are representatives from the Labour Department and the DOFJ. Um, because we've got 19 deputations today, so everyone will be given no more than three minutes um, to express your views. Uh, if you have written submissions, and you have not provided them to us yet, please hand them over to the Secretariat after the meeting. So let's uh, start now. The first one to speak is the, Mr. Ahn from DAB. The DAB supports the legislation on paternity leave, PL, and we believe that it will allow uh, male workers to um, give support to his uh, spouse. But then um, we have two suggestions towards the legislation, Section 15J. Now, if a child is born outside of Hong Kong, the male employee can provide information to the employer, um, um, the relevant documents from the overseas authorities to certify that the um, child is his. And I'm afraid that the um, 
the the documents may not be very clear to the employer, and there may be disputes over the authenticity of the documents. Another comment is related to Section 15E. Now, if the male employee uh, is to take a PL and he is required to provide a written statement um, saying that he his wife is going to be, give birth. And he doesn't need to provide additional or extra documentary proof um, on the relationship between him and the pregnant women. And this is done on a voluntary basis, and there may be loopholes. So I think the government can take reference from um, ML maternity leave arrangement, perhaps um, documentary proof of the mother's um, condition should be um, furnished. Lastly, um, PL is a new thing in Hong Kong, and in the initial period of implementation, people, people may not be very well aware of the implementation details. So in, in order to better protect male employees' uh, benefits, the government should draw up clear guidelines on this. So I think the government should take the lead in implementing from family friendly policies and um, implement people oriented human resources policies. The next one is Mr. Wong from the Hong Kong Taxi Owners Association Limited. For the provision of PL leave and other statutory benefits, that's too taxing on in uh, small enterprises. Say if we are to make the um, do away with the offsetting arrangement of MPF and other statutory benefits. It's not that we don't want to provide um, the benefits, but it is um, posing some difficulties for us indeed. <coughs> we also have the uh, minimum wage um, to comply with, and there are also suggestions on um, setting standard working hours. So for the SMEs and the employers or individuals, um, they may find it hard to continue with their business. We are also worried that um, we have to pay rental and wages on time, and this is very difficult for us. Uh, we ourselves, the employers, have to um, work too um, in the business. <coughs> so, uh, as a whole, does Hong Kong uh, can Hong Kong afford so many employee benefits? Um, it's very hard for the um, small businesses. So, honourable members. Please, when you uh, consider these laws, uh, please take care of the interest of the small businesses as well, because legislation is all-encompassing and covers um, businesses of all sizes. For small businesses and startup businesses, then it's very difficult. If there are too many uh, benefits, let's say the minimum wage standard has been implemented for a couple of years, and small businesses uh, fail to recruit enough um, staff, say this is the case in uh, restaurants and Chinese-style um, Hong Kong cafes, and also for garages and so on, they are having a difficult time. Well. A business may employ, say, only a couple of employees. So if one of them takes leave, the, uh, it will be very difficult for the employer. So the employer has to really roll up his sleeves and work 365 days a year, so I hope that you can take care of the interest of the small businesses. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Thank you, Mr. Wong. I'll now um, hand over the floor to Mr. Lee from the Right of People's Livelihood and Legal Association Hong Kong. Thank you, Chairman. Our association supports the government's uh, enactment of legislation to provide for paternity leave for male employees. 
since uh, uh, the penalty leave is now <coughs> provided for uh, <coughs> male employees and the leave is proposed to be three days, we believe that it should be at least five days and seven days would be best. Of course, different people have different considerations. Now, since we are going to propose, to, uh, uh, we're proposing to provide paternity leave for male employees and to take care of the needs of the spouses. If there is a smooth delivery from the time of admission to the time uh, uh, the, 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 the wife leaves the hospital, uh, three days would be appropriate. But some. Sometimes the mental state of the mother, I mean, could you know, the mother could suffer from a postnatal depression, and she may need time to to <clears throat> to readjust her, 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 her emotions and so on. So it would be appropriate that we provide for five days of leave. If the wife needs to undergo surgery, uh, it would take longer from the time of admission to the hospital. It would take longer before they she will be discharged and the uh, the surgery may <coughs> require a longer stay. So three days certainly is not enough if the wife would need to go through a cesarean operation. We must also bear in mind that we are in close proximity with the mainland. Very often spouses of Hong Kong men will come to Hong Kong to give birth. Now if the spouse from the mainland comes to Hong Kong to deliver, uh, will the, uh, uh, the 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 the, the uh, husband be eligible to the same uh, uh, benefits? So I hope we will provide more consideration for the. Uh, 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 we can have a, you know we can ensure that there is a harmonious you know labor relationship between employers and employees. Next, uh, uh, Miss. Chen Ho Lam from the Federation of Hong Kong Kalu Labor Union. Our federation supports the proposal to <clears throat> for paternity leave. The subject has been discussed for a long time. Instead of further deliberating on the issue uh, <clears throat> forever, I think we should enact legislation as soon as possible, and then following that uh, uh, to have annual reviews. In many advanced countries, they are already providing paternity leave. In neighboring countries like Japan, South Korea, and Singapore, and even the UK. Uh, they are also providing male employees with uh, maternity leave uh, of different uh, durations. Some countries already implemented paternity leave arrangements, and it's proven to be very satisfactory, and it has not caused any major burden to the economies. Coming back to Hong Kong, uh, the paternity leave is already provided to civil servants. To be fair, I think this should be extended to all male employees in Hong Kong. They should all be also entitled. Looking at the figures, the Labor Department had consulted, uh, conducted a survey of 18 organizations, and those uh, organizations uh, which are uh, which provide uh, paternity leave uh, to the staff has gone up from 16% in 2006 to uh, 2012, uh, which is only 40%. And this could mean that if the government doesn't act enact the legislation, it's difficult uh, for all employees to benefit. I would also like to share with you an example. Uh, we have uh, come across workers who work as waiters in a restaurant. Uh, the, uh, the worker intended to take leave for one or two days when the wife is in uh, in uh, you know is giving birth uh, and, and he intended to take uh, one or two days leave, but the baby was born, you know, earlier than scheduled, and then she had to take half a day leave to go to the hospital, and and as a result, I mean, uh, he might want to take one or two more days to accompany her, his wife in the hospital, and and look after the baby, and it's not so easy. So to reiterate, I think we can only protect the benefits of the workers through legislation. I hope that this friendly, family-friendly measure will be implemented as soon as possible. Next, we have the <coughs> Ms. Hoon from the Service Industry General Union. Thank you. I'm Hin Wei Han. I represent the Service Industry General Union. Our union has more than 30,000 members. We're here today to uh, uh, express our position in relation to the uh, proposal to provide paternity leave. We believe that the proposed amendment uh, uh, has its merits and, and demerits. Uh, uh, we're happy that uh, you know the male employees now uh, are 
are entitled to paternal leave when a child is to be born. Uh, the husband can have three days to visit and to take care of the baby. We're also disappointed because we all remember that in 2012, the government already said that starting from April 1st, all male civil servants, if the wife were to uh, give birth, they are entitled to five full days of paternity leave. And this was implemented since April 1st, 2012. At the time, we were thinking that very soon uh, the law will be enacted so that the average uh, working man will also be entitled to a five-day paternity leave. We have been expecting this, but unfortunately, we've been waiting for two years, and now, Eventually, we have some news, but it, but however, uh, the government is only proposing a three-day paternity leave, and the entitlement is only four fifths of the daily average wage. Why is it that two years since uh, the civil servants were given such entitlements, and after the government has conducted so many studies, they are now only proposing a three-day paternity leave uh, with 80% uh, of the average wage, daily wage, and is even worse than before. Uh, we believe that paternity leave should be for five days and that the, uh, the entitlement should be equivalent to 100% of daily average wage. The three-day, four-fifths of daily wage uh, uh, Provision. How can that help provide encourage people to uh, to uh, to uh, produce more to, to to give birth to children? And in the case of a stillbirth or miscarriage, again, uh, you know, uh, the, the 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 husband will not be entitled to the three day paternity leave. Just imagine that when a baby is you know dies at birth. Just imagine how the parents would feel. I think we should be more humanistic. We should give them a few days leave so that they can, you know, the husband can take care of the the, the <coughs> mother who might be actually uh, uh, in grief. So I think we should, uh, the government should consider this point. And also, after the legislation comes into effect, there should be an annual review. Next, we have Mr. Pang Chiu Wai from the IT People's Association of Hong Kong. Chairman, I represent the IT People's Association. Our association supports the early amendment of the employment ordinance in order that uh, uh, men can be provided uh, with uh, paternity leave. And this has been implemented overseas for many years. 48 different jurisdictions are now providing different forms of paternity leave. Not putting aside the welfare states in the West where they provide more than 10 days of paternity leave. Coming back to Asia and in countries like South Korea, they are providing five days paternity leave. Three, uh, the, the employee will have uh, three full, full, uh, you know, full pay paternity leave and two paternity leave with no pay. We are an international city. We should have an international perspective. The three day paternity leave. In a, now, uh, when the wife is about to give birth, the husband will have to accompany the wife to go to the hospital. When you go to the hospital, very often we have to wait for a few hours or even more than 10 hours to wait for the birth of the, of the child. <clears throat> and that would take another day. Two or three days later, when the wife is discharged, the husband will need to take leave and accompany the wife uh, to help her <clears throat> uh, with the discharge from the hospital. Upon discharge, the wife is still in very weak health. The husband will have to look, take care of the baby and the wife, and he may need two or three days uh, leave to to help the wife, to, to take care of the wife and to take care of the household chores. And that would already make up four to five days. That is only the, the, the typical situation. In exceptional circumstances where the wife suffers from post-birth uh, depression, uh, then uh, the, the husband would need to stay longer at home to look after the wife and the children. We therefore believe that the three-day paternity leave and the 80% of the da daily average wage is only the minimum. We propose that the government should conduct a review in a year's time so that eventually five days paternity leave will be provided. Next, the Hong Kong Federation Trade Union Women Affairs Committee, uh, Ms. Leung Chung Yan. Thank you, Chairman. Regarding the uh, proposed amendment, uh, uh, we are uh, we welcome the 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 uh, uh, 
the second reading of the bill in Lexco. The we believe that that three day paternity leave and eighty percent of the minute daily average daily wave is only this uh, the, the, the beginning. We hope that after the uh, <coughs> this uh, arrangement has been in place for a year, the government should conduct a review and gradually review the number of paternity leave so that eventually it will be in line with the benefits and <clears throat> of civil servants. That is five days of paternity leave so that the husband can take care of the the baby and his wife. Other than the paternity leave, we believe that the content of the employment ordinance in Hong Kong is lagging behind our uh, neighboring jurisdictions. The provision, the the the, the bill, the, the ordinance doesn't provide sufficient friend, family friendly uh, measures. It doesn't protect sufficiently the rights of women. The government should take this opportunity while amending the employment ordinance to review uh, uh, the provisions in the ordinance which are <coughs> uh, which are uh, <coughs> uh, uh, lagging behind the time, so that we can provide better. Uh, protection of the family and to employ the it improve the quality of life for employees and also release the uh, the uh, the productivity of uh, women workers. We propose that we should amend the existing employment ordinance. Uh, maternity leave should for our maternity leave we should be entitled to full pay. We should also follow the IL. O proposal for the uh, protection of the rights uh, of reproduction, we should extend the uh, maternity leave to to make it <coughs> in line with international practices, and that uh, ensure <coughs> that women who have given birth will not be dismissed unreasonably after they have given birth. And fourthly, we should amend the arrangement in respect of uh, pre-inspection, uh, pre uh, pre-delivery uh, inspection. And fifthly, we should come up with provision regarding, uh, you know, uh, standard working hours and to implement flexible working hours and compensation regimes so that the employee so that there will be a proper balance between the interests of employers and employees. And finally, we should uh, review the minimum wage uh, every year and implement the minimum uh, and employ the uh, uh, the uh, minimum working hours uh, provision to ensure that women employees will not be exploited. Thank you. <coughs> Next, Mr. Jackie Chen from the Civic Party. Since the Civic Party was inaugurated, we have been fighting for the legislation on PL. So we support the amendment of the employment uh, ordinance to provide PL for male workers so that they can be entitled to paid leave to take care of their uh, wives. The Civic Party supports the legislative proposal, but it doesn't meet with the society's aspirations for PL. The administration should explain clearly how uh, regular reviews will be done on this bill. More specifically, the administration's proposal of three days of PL doesn't um, fully take care of the needs of employees. I'm a father of two children, and in three days, we can just uh, help the wife uh, return from the hospital to the home. And in terms of taking care of the wife's psychological needs, well, that can be done in three days. So since in our inauguration, we have been, um, the Civic Party has been giving our employees seven days PL. And in some organizations, 14 days are offered. So compared to the legislative proposal of three days, uh, well, it's, it's, they're far much better. Some employers believe that three days PL may add burden um, to the company or um, affect the operations of the company. But then uh, childbirth rate is so low in Hong Kong. So it's very rare that many people in the same company would take PL at the same time. So I believe that um, seven days PL should be allowed and offered. The government. Um, takes reference um, from the arrangements for ML maternity leave for arranging PL. The arrangements for PL 
are similar to those for ML maternity leave. Um, the administration is not using this opportunity to uh, improve the existing legislation, and we are disappointed about that. The Civic Party um, urgently uh, urges the government to uh, review the present employment ordinance to encourage more childbirths. Um, in general, Civic Party supports the legislation, but there are, is still so much room for improvement. Uh, we urge that the um, government review the, um, the maternity and paternity leave uh, now. Next, to Mr. Yap from the Hong Kong Air Cargo Terminals Employees Union. PL can help uh, male employees discharge their responsibilities to the family and can help uh, foster a um, good family, harmonious family, and it foster strengthens the sense of belonging of employees and it, uh, it does good both for the employers and employees. This is a win-win situation, so I personally that uh, support that it be implemented as soon as possible. But according to Section 15D, um, Three days PL is provided. We I don't think that's enough. Um, I think it should be raised to five days. I think that's more uh, reasonable. Um, you can imagine that um, not everyone in Hong Kong can have um, three to four children. I, for myself, I have two kids. I have never enjoyed one single day of PL. Now. According to Section 15D, then, well, I would be only be able to um, enjoy three days PL for the rest of my life. So, in fact, the employers um, only need to commit little resources, um, and then they can be seen as being very sympathetic and caring for their employees. Now, uh, having a new newborn is just something very um, happy, and every prospective father would hope to be able to spend more time to take care of the uh, newborn and the wife, and the wife had enough time already. So by giving five days PL, the uh, husband can help much in dealing with family matters at this particular time of their family. So when they return to their positions, um, then the employers will be um, happier and they can uh, work more effectively. And that also helps uh, boost the employees' uh, sense of belonging to the company. So I hope that um, the legislation can be implemented as soon as possible to benefit um, every working uh, person in Hong Kong. Next one, Labour Party, Mr. C. M. Land. Um, the government has been promoting Hong Kong as a home. Now, I want to ask the government, what is a home? The working class doesn't have a family life in Hong Kong. Long working hours, too little holidays, too few holidays, little time to spend with the family. So what is a home to these people? Um, tomorrow is the Mother's Day. Well, mo mothers are, are, are very great, um, and when they give birth, uh, they need somebody to take care of them. If a woman gives birth to a child, and then the husband doesn't have time to take care um, of her sp his spouse, um, we can't talk about a quality family life. Three days PL. I mean, the big employers are already complaining, saying that it will drive up um, labor costs. Of course, you will say that, but you've never treated your employees as human beings. They, you're treating them as just as human uh, machines. Have you tried to empathize with them, um, sympathizing with their need to take care of their family members? According to According to government statistics, the total cost will only be $140 million, taking up 0.02% of all wages. Now, three days. Now, it's just uh, too minimal. And, well, these three days may probably be spent for the, the, the wife staying in the hospital. So the Labour Party is asking for seven days. We think that uh, seven days um, is a reasonable and fair request. The government is also taking the lead in creating all sorts of unfairness. Now, 
see civil servants are entitled to five days. We are now having a legislative proposal of three days, and the government is taking the lead in creating unfairness and different classes of society in the society are trying to classify or segmentize the different working classes in Hong Kong. So we um, are asking for seven days per uh, PL. Lastly, um, the government proposes that uh, the pay for PL should be similar to that for ML. But the Labour Party believes that full pay should be offered. We ask that the legislation should provide for full paid PL. Next one. Democratic Party, Mr. Ricky Or, oh, good morning. Hong Kong is a metropolis, international metropolis. But in terms of family prim, family policies, we are lacking far behind other countries in terms of standard working hours and um, 14 day, 14 weeks maternity leave. The government is tracking its feet. According to a survey, um, it shows that over 77 point percent of employees indicate that they are having health problems because of an unbalanced work life. And 40 percent said that they will consider leaving their present positions. So well, so we can see that uh, work-life balance is really a problem that the government should face squarely uh, to. The DP has all along been advocating for full pay PL. It can ease pressure. Um, when a child is given birth in a family, and it can help um, the father in taking care of the family, and it promotes gender equality. Now, after uh, many years of hard work, the government is now proposing the Employment Amendment Bill 2014. We welcome it. But then the starting point is only three days, PL, and four-fifths of the average daily wages. I think the government is not being sincere here. In April 1st, 2012, um, PL it has already been implemented for civil servants. And on that basis, only three days PL are offered uh, to the rest of the community. We don't get it. Why are we segregating the civil servants and the ordinary um, members of the community? Taking reference from overseas ex examples in, US, in the UK, two, two weeks. PL and Norway, 56 weeks. In Norway, 56 weeks uh, for ML and 14 uh, weeks for PL. And in Japan, five days PL. And 48 jurisdictions are implementing various types of PL, and the average is 14 days of PL. So PL is a must. But the question is, three is three days enough? This is so meager. The Women is experiencing um, the most, uh, the greatest challenge in her life when giving birth to a child. And if she has a husband beside her, then that's going to be very good. And many women are suffering from postnatal depression, and that leads to all sorts of problems. There are so many examples of this. So if the father can be by her side, then that would help um, relieve postnatal stress or depression. Now, four fits of average daily wages. We have reservation on that. Um, in giving birth to a child, the family uh, will have um, more bills to food. So I think the four-fifths proposal is not reasonable. So the Democratic Party um, supports uh, the proposal of turning it into 14 days PL uh, with full pay. And the administration should also implement more family friendly policies, including 14 weeks of maternity leave and also uh, more childcare services. Mr. Tam, Hong Kong Catering Industry Association. The association is not against providing PL, but we are against uh, using legislation and doing it on a mandatory basis. Especially, we are um, short handed and the um, Sector believes that it's unreasonable. Uh, we understand that a wife needs a husband to be by her side when she's giving birth. And if an employer can afford it, well, we encourage employers to give PL on a voluntary basis. And normally, we can say that employers are sympathetic uh, towards uh, this issue. But if we are 
adopting a sweeping approach, then under legislation, um, everyone is made to do it, and and the sector thinks it's not fair. For every eatery in Hong Kong, um, there is a uh, staff shortage on a long-term basis. For <coughs> major uh, establishments, that uh, can still be acceptable, but then for small businesses, that's going to be a problem. An extra burden is added onto them. So I hope that you can take a more balanced view. Of course, we respect labor rights, but we don't agree that for every issue there should be legislation and the business environment will be undermined and Hong Kong's competitiveness will also be eroded. Next, we, Mr. Kevin Yao from the Institute of Dining Art. Thank you. Good morning, members. Regarding the Employment Amendment Bill 2014, our institution, on behalf of the catering industry and our members, would like to make the following submission: We attach a lot of importance to labor relations. We also, uh, you know, take uh, lay, uh, you know employee rights seriously. For a husband, a husband will need to discharge his uh, duty as a husband, so therefore we support uh, uh, paternity leave. Uh, at the same time, the catering industry is now suffering uh, a labor shortage, and many employers are willing to provide additional benefits such as paternity leave in order to retain staff and to attract talents joining the industry. It can help improve the image of the employers. But we do not agree that we should take the legislative route. Different uh, the SMEs which are suff suffering from a serious shortage of uh, labor to provide additional holidays to their employees may affect the operations of the um, uh, restaurants. For male employees, well, if male employees take paternity leave, the restaurants may need to hire, you know, temporary staff uh, in replacement, and that would add to their costs. We therefore propose that the government should encourage the employers to provide. Paternity leave for their male employees and give guidance uh, for the, um, and uh, 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 instead of uh, uh, making the mandatory requirement and compel all employers to provide paternity leave to their male employees. Next, uh, Mr. Peter Park Mark from the Public Omnibus Operators Association, Chairman. Our association do not object to the uh, legislative proposal, but we note that. Uh, Male employee, the, the the medium age of male employees in different industries, will uh, result in different impact if we have were to implement paternity leave. For our industry, the problem that we're now facing is that we do not have any uh, uh, new blood joining the industry, and there is a shortage of labor. If we were to provide paternity leave for male employees, it may affect our service quality and standards. So I think we have to first of all help the different industries resolve the problems they face before we implement this uh, legislative proposal. In the labor market for our industry, I think on the premise that we can resolve the labor shortage problem, we do not object to the proposal. As to how we should resolve the problem, that is not the subject of discussion today. But the operators of many industries all want uh, to uh, resort to active training and also the import of labor in order to relieve uh, the labor shortage problem. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. The Wu Chu from the Association of Restaurant Managers. Thank you. Good morning, honourable members. The Association of Restaurant Managers' uh, position regarding the proposal to of three-day paternity leave <coughs> is that we have our reservations. The catering industry has been operating under great difficulties. Our various expenses like uh, rent, wages, <coughs> cost of raw materials, transportation expenses, and various management uh, expenses are going up all the time. And now it is proposed that we should provide for paternity leave. Although the additional costs incurred may not be significant, but then if all expenses were to go up, then it will further add to the burden that we have to bear. We are most worried that we, since we already have a, a very serious labor shortage problem, and the problem will only be further aggravated. For Chinese restaurants, for example, we are uh, we have <coughs> a severe shortage of people who do the washing and so on. It's, it's not that uh, we don't have applicants for 
the jobs, but the, the employers would uh, very often ask for the pay, payment of wages on a daily basis. Uh, and, and they don't want to contribute to the MPF. If we're going to have the three-day <coughs> paternity leave, the labor shortage will only be further aggravated, and we cannot easily hire, uh, you know, uh, temporary staff. When we try to hire temporary staff through the labor department, very often the, the workers who, who, are, who report for duty only work for a day and then will not come again the next day. In, rest, in Western District, there is a Chinese restaurant, a seafood restaurant. After the Chinese New Year, after they received the lucky money, they they no longer, you know, uh, came back for work, and eventually the restaurant had to close down, and uh, somebody took over. Recently, another uh, peer of ours started a, uh, set up a small restaurant, but he was never able to hire the required number of. Uh, staff and eventually had to give up, and only a few people are left. So it's difficult to hire people, especially for those in the dim sum department. Uh, we need to produce fresh uh, food for our customers, but very, that nobody's now willing to join this uh, trade. Uh, Hong Kong's uh, reputation as a gourmet paradise, I'm afraid, will soon uh, uh, disappear because the quality of our of our products are going down all the time. Before we can resolve the labor shortage problem, I don't think we should uh, <coughs> implement this proposal across the board. Next, we have Mr. Fung Bing Hao from the Hong Kong Kowloon Vermicelli and Noodle Manufacturing Industries Merchants Association. Thank you. Our association strongly objects to the proposal for uh, the provision of paternity leave. Our industry is already facing serious labor shortage in recent years. Production of vermicelli and noodle requires special skills. We can't just, you know, hire any ordinary worker and put them <coughs> and train them for a couple of days, and then they can, and, and then they can, uh, you know. <coughs> uh, 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 perform the duties. The minimum wage uh, provision already has taken away some of our staff. Some of our experienced workers already switched to other trades, and we're not able to find young uh, workers to replace them. And we don't have the ability to offer uh, high wages like those uh, <coughs> offered by the construction industry. Now the government is saying that we should provide for three-day paternity leave, and this will only aggravate further the labor shortage problem. The government is ignoring the difficulties that we're now facing, and and the uh, employers like ourselves, operate as SMEs, uh, have lost all our dignity. The, our, our, our staff can choose to leave at any time, and we're also worry that following the minimum wage provision, the paternity leave will become a political tool for trade unions. Uh, uh, and uh, with it, with, and, and as a result, trade unions will start, will continue to ask for more and more wages. And for our industry, very few people will benefit from paternity leave. So I don't know what kind of society is becoming. Our society is becoming. There are some uh, uh, people who keep demanding that workers should not do so much work and they should have. Uh, as many holidays as possible, and this is most unfair and unreasonable. It doesn't benefit anyone. Our society, in our society, nobody is forced to work, but our employers are now, you know, <clears throat> are now being, you know, uh, subject to, uh, you know, all these unfair treatment. So we. Uh, we have uh, well. Uh, uh, we don't have people to help sustain our business, and in the end, our, our industry will only uh, uh, <clears throat> close down eventually. If there are no employers, then uh, it will really be a disaster. Now, since since we don't can't hire enough uh, workers, we can only ask the workers to uh, work overtime, and we, we were to ask them to work, uh, you know, uh, overtime uh, uh, beyond a certain limit will be will be prosecuted. So this is really, you know, uh, hurting uh, the incentive of people who want to invest in Hong Kong. I think we've heard all the temptations, and I will first invite the administration to
just uh, make a simple response. Mr. Hoi, Assistant Director from the Labor Department. Thank you, Chairman. I'll give a global response to all the views expressed this morning. First of all, I'd like to thank all the deputations for the views that you've given us. Let me first of all explain the uh, uh, overall policy of the government in, in uh, regarding labor benefits. Our economic policies is such that we aim at steadily increasing the employee benefits. Uh, in doing so, we our principle is that we should strike a good balance between the interests of employers and employees. All our legislative proposals, in for all our legislative proposals, we will first consider, uh, let, ask the Labor Department to discuss the issues. Uh, and the Labor Department is chaired by the Labor Department with six representatives from the employer side and six from the employee side. All our proposals are discussed by the LAB and all, the all interests are balanced before we put forward a legislative proposal. The present uh, uh, legislative proposal for PL has also been discussed by the LAB and a consensus was reached before the government put forward this proposal to let you go. The legislative proposal uh, uh, I think most of you are concerned about the number. Uh, some deputations saying that the civil servants are given are offered uh, uh, five days of paternity leave. Why is it the government are proposing only three days? Let me say first of all that you cannot have a direct comparison. The entitlement for civil servants is the benefits provided by the government as an employer to to civil servants. And the PL for civil servants uh, is five, exactly five days, no more and no less. Whereas the number of days stipulated in our proposed amendment is the minimum. That is, if employers, after the passage of this bill, uh, employers will have to give a minimum of three days of paternity leave. After the uh, proposal is implemented, then you know, businesses of all size and scale, sizes and scale will have to give a minimum of three days of PL. Of course, wherever possible, we encourage the employer to, to provide uh, more than a minimum. In fact, we have not. Uh, before we uh, uh, propose the provision of paternity leave, we've, according to our study of the members of the Human Resources Management Association, we found out that some employers are already providing for more than three days of PL. In a legislative proposal, we are saying three days because uh, we have to look at the local situation. Uh, we've conducted a study amongst the 18 Human Resources Management Association and the 1,000 odd organizations they represent. The, result, the finding is that on average they do provide PL uh, with, of the duration of three days. More than 40% of the member association uh, provide three days, uh, one to three day, 81 percent offer one to three days of paternity leave. Having considered the paternity leave situation in Hong Kong and after the LB had arrived at the consensus, we are now proposing that the PL uh, entitlement should be three days. Another concern is why four-fifths of the average daily wage. Uh, some of you suggested that we, it, it, our proposal should be aligned with those of the maternity leave. In Hong Kong, we have two types of holidays, uh, the statutory holidays, which, uh, for which employees are entitled to full pay. And we also have uh, incidental leave like sick, sickness leave and maternity leave. Uh, the provision is 80% of the daily average wage. And this is consistent with the ILO uh, uh, guideline. The ILO, uh, in the ILO covenant, they require the statutory states to provide full pay for statutory holidays. But for sick leave and maternity leave, uh, the covenant would require uh, the different countries to offer two thirds of the average wage. In Hong Kong, we pack it at a level of 80%, which is already. Uh, higher than the minimum required by the covenant. As for the question 
uh, uh, whether or not uh, if the spouse is not a Hong Kong resident, will the husband still enjoy the paternity leave? The answer is yes. Whether or not the employee is entitled to paternity leave depends on whether or not the employee satisfies the, the legal requirements. And whether or not his spouse is lived in Hong Kong or a Hong Kong resident, that is not relevant. The uh, male employee, if he satisfies the legal requirements, he would be entitled. Another, some deputations also refer to children born outside of Hong Kong. The law, the, the, the bill stipulates that the, author, the documents to be provided by the authorities in the jurisdiction concern should be furnished. For example, a birth certificate or other documents which prove the relationship between the employee and the newborn child. We understand that it is difficult to spell out all scenarios in the law. In the case of Hong Kong, we can be very specific. Uh, we know that all babies born in Hong Kong will have a birth. Uh, we, we each have a birth certificate. But there are so many countries in the world we will not be able to to know about the various documents which are used in different countries. So if the child has a birth certificate, then the employer should provide the birth certificate. If the jurisdiction doesn't provide birth certificates, then the employee can provide other documents to certify his uh, his relationship with that of a child and proving that he's the father. Where there are controversies, then we rely on the existing mechanism. That is, if the employer and the employee have any arguments over the uh, documents, then we can, the Labor Department can provide for a mediation service. If that fails, then we'll leave it to the Labor Tribunal or the Small Wage Claims uh, Tribunal for, for uh, 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 mediation. I think that more or less is my response, but I'll be happy to, 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 to uh, take other questions. So I will now read out the names of members who would like to ask, speak. Wong Kok Heng, Tommy Jiang, Li Chek Yuan, Kok Wai Kong, Pun Siu Kong, and Chen Yun Han. Anyone else? Mr. Sin Chung Kai. So shall we say five minutes per member? Mr. Wong Kok Heng. Thank you. Um. Chairman, first of all, I would like to welcome deputations for giving your views on PL here today. Friends uh, or associations from the catering industry just now raised a strong objection, but there are still others who welcome the proposal. For employers' um, associations strongly objecting uh, the proposal, I would like to say that this um, paid PL can help um, improve the employer's image and also um, help retain staff. I mean, this is a good measure for retaining staff. So please don't get, look at it too negatively. This is, in fact, an improvement of employer employee relations. I n appreciate the difficulties faced by the catering industry, and it's precisely because of this that you have to attract new blood and new talents into the industry. You must improve the employment conditions. And you should not um, view it as something very negative. This is going against the current trend. You can see that the government and the Labour Department has conducted a survey and um, in the member organisations of the Human Resources Management Clubs, um, you can see that before the government implements legislation, a lot of employers are in fact providing PL to boost the um, companies image and retain staff. This is very much a trend here in Hong Kong already. So I hope that employers associations can go with the trend. I have a question for the administration. Just now, the
the uh, Women Affairs Committee of the FTU and other organizations uh, proposed an annual review of the legislation. Our year review should be uh, undertaken after one year. And with a view to increasing the number of PL days from the present three to uh, five, uh, aligning with the civil servants' uh, benefits. Um, the Labor Department representative said that um, there are two types of holidays and hence the two different pay levels. But I think we should treat everyone equally in Hong Kong. The government has taken the lead in offering PL and that we should commend um, that was a breakthrough and that was an undertaken by the ex CE, Mr. Donald Zhang, in response to um, the labor union's demand. He, he called it a breakthrough and I hope that um, the PL should be standardized among different sectors in the community. Administration, can you respond? Thank you, Chairman. We don't yet have PL legislation, so we are drawing up the legislative proposal based on the current situation, and i.e. many people are providing three days PL. Now, we said that after one year of implementation, we would conduct a review on how it has been operating, and then we would duly um, forward our recommendations to the LAB. I still have a follow-up, um, Chairman. The Women Affairs Committee of the FTU is very concerned that for maternity leave, some employers are dismissing um, pregnant women who are taking or have yet to take ML. So with the government um, be worried that um, employer will dismiss a uh, male employee if he takes PL. Um, for the protection afforded to pregnant uh, women workers, uh, well, um, in fact, the treatment is a little bit different for male workers. Um, the protection is very much on uh, for the women um, covers not only um, the maternity leave but also the period of pregnancy and when the women are pregnant and because of her health conditions she may not be able to take up a um, laborious task, say, and she may take leave to have medical examinations. So during the pregnancy period, she will be very sort of uh, susceptible to dismissal. So that's why we have um, made protection for them. Now the legislation was uh, drawn up um, in 1981, and at that time there was no um, sex discrimination ordinance yet. So at that time, when the woman was dismissed during her pregnancy, it would be very difficult for her to find another job. But for the male employees, well, they don't have to go through a pregnancy period. So the situation is, is a bit different. So in terms of the um, leave days and also the um, male employees' physical conditions, we would not be having any change at all. So in terms of the PL uh, leave, um, we we don't think that uh, protection on against dismissal is uh, in proportion to the issues uh, um, being considered. Mr. Lee Chuck yan next. Well, I'd like to thank the petitions for giving your views. And employers associations have been telling us that there is a labor shortage I think this is a good thing in, in some sense because the economy is boost is faring well. 
it shows that the economy is faring well. And the Confederation of Trade Union believes that if that is the case, then we should do something to release uh, women into the workforce, workforce, and we should improve employment conditions to attract uh, women back to the labor market. Uh, we know that there are um, a potential workforce of um, of um, f uh, 500,000 women who can join the work force and some 240,000 uh, women aged 25 to 60 who have yet to join the workforce. That's my first response. And some uh, catering empl employers in the catering industry said that uh, um, it's very problematic having PL. Several years ago when we talked about minimum wage and people were um, giving, uh, were saying that uh, businesses might closed down. But conversely, what happened is that there is a labor shortage. Well, this is something that the world economists can um, study. How come that um, a minimum wage implementation will create a labor shortage? This would be good stuff uh, for academic study. I think this is a good thing. So we now know that um, we can implement minimum wage smoothly. Now you today you are saying that paternity leave may force us, uh, may force some businesses uh, or to close down. I think you 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 are afraid of everything. You are opposing um a measure which will have minimal effect in my view. So please take a rational approach on things. I think the impact of PL is very minimal on employers. Let me give you some statistics. In a year, um, apart from civil servants, 46,500 male workers may um, take PL and times three days, and we're talking about tens of thousands of leave days, but we are talking about 160 million work days, and the total PL um, will create an extra cost of 0.02% of the total wages. Is Will it uh, pose such a great difficulties to you? Well, employers, you said that uh, the government should not take a cut across the board approach, but I don't agree with that. Well, you may have um, collective bargaining power, but then ultimately, you say 60, 50 percent or 80 percent of, say, a Chinese restaurant provides PL, then um, a voluntary approach may work okay, but then, say, this is not the situation now. Say, for the uh, Institution of Dining Art, I, ha I would like to ask you how many members in your institution offer PL. Now, if you, have, you are asking for um, it to be done on a voluntary basis, but I don't think it works. It's just like the case in the protection of wages campaign in the past. Well, the voluntary approach doesn't work. Well, if we find that, say, 50% of the employers are doing it, then it's all right. But this is not the, si the case or the situation in reality. So my question is, um, how many employers are offering PL on a voluntary basis? Anyone from the catering industry would like to ta take that question? Mr. Yao, Institution of Dining Art. We don't have any concrete figures um, on hand. How many eateries are offering PL? But let's not ignore the fact that um, many SMEs are having operational difficulties and the, uh, we still face a shortage of labor. Uh, laborers, and that 
um, triggers a lot of other problems, making it difficult for SMEs to survive. I know that my time is almost up. I just want to add this. Now, you said that SMEs are having a difficult time, but then I don't see any large employers offering PL either. So just don't talk to me about SMEs. If uh, large um, uh, enterprises are offering PL, well, tell me the number. You don't have specific examples. You've been in the industry for a long time, and you don't have the figures on the um, big companies, perhaps Mr. Tommy uh, Zhang can uh, well fill in up, fill in on that point. So uh, it doesn't work for big companies and small companies alike. So we have to go down the legislative route. Mr. Court Wai Kang next. The Labour Department said that the employment conditions of civil servants differ from those in the uh, private sector. So five days for first civil servants first and three days for um, private sector. I think that's problematic. The government is the largest employer in Hong Kong. It gives people feeling that uh, the government can afford to be more Ooh. lenient because it's, we're talking about public money and for the private sectors we have to consider their affordability so hence the three days so please don't resort to that of uh, rationale anymore please give us specific uh, answers on why three days fewer in the private sector well perhaps you can be frank saying that the employers are giving you pressure you can say that well please uh, don't say that the employment conditions are different second A lot of employers said that um, with PL they won't be able to survive. I'm dubious on that sort of remark. Um, the a colleague uh, used a, a percentage, 0.02 percent of the total wages. Now, uh, 46,500 people may apply for PL, and that takes up three percent of all male workers. So, in other words, if an employer has a hundred male employees and three people in a year can, will take PL, and that adds up to a total of nine PLs a year, is it that difficult? <coughs> well, if the business is going to close down because of that nine days. Well, then I don't think that's a good business. It may close down any time as well. So it it means an av on average one PL every month. So don't use SMEs as an excuse anymore. Now say, well, it's very common that say in your company, uh, an employee, on average, uh, may take one sick um, leave per month, and that um, the SME can still be able to carry on mm. the business. So don't be so miserly. We're talking about a minimal amount here. I want to raise questions about specific uh, statistics. The government said that in a study earlier, 81% of um, companies are offering one to three PLs, 40% are offering three days PL, and then the other 40% one to two days. So the other 19% is offering more than three <coughs> PL days. Um, the Labour Department said that it's the minimum requirement. You can offer a benefit well and above the minimum. But what about those who are offering more than three days originally? Now you have this piece of legislation. They want to save up on costs, and they will reduce it to three days only. And they're changing their employment contracts. Will it be a breach of the um, law? To answer your first Question: That the government is providing five days of PL. I'm not saying that 
the government's uh, terms of employment must be different from those in of the private market. I'm just saying that you can't simply cannot uh, compare the two. The government provides for five days of paternity leave uh, in the light of the manpower requirements. Uh, uh, and decided that the PR should be for five days. It's specifically five days. It would not be more than five days or fewer than five days. But then enacting a piece of legislation is something else. The law would need to provide for a minimum standard. Of course, the uh, uh, the terms of employment in the private market should be determined decided by the employers and employees. The purpose of uh, enacting the legislation is to lay down the minimum standard. Uh, that is. If there is going to be a terms of employment, then it should not fall under this minimum requirement. Of course, the employer can offer more. So the consideration is different. When we enact a piece of legislation, when we provide for a minimum standard, we have to consider uh, the, you know, businesses of all sizes and scales, and uh, which all have to comply. Some employers now are already offering uh, more PL leave than, uh, they, than what the law requires. In future, if the law says that the PL should be for three days, and if the employer wants to change the terms of employment, he cannot do so unilaterally. The employment ordinance says that the employer cannot unilaterally change the terms of employment, otherwise it would constitute an unreasonable uh, change of the terms of employment, and that is illegal. Mr. Ping. I'd like to thank the deputations for coming to give us the, your views. I heard that most of you are in support of enacting legislation to provide uh, paternity leave, while some have expressed reservations. Some employer associations say that we should not take the legislative route; we should, uh, you know, re resort to uh, guidelines instead. I, in the past, uh, if it works, we would have used guidelines uh, already uh, before. Then, if uh, the the employer doesn't, you know, want to do it, there could be arguments. Now, I have some questions for the government. The deputations uh, demanded that there should be an annual review. My understanding is that uh, that that you're asking for a review after the implementation of paternity leave. The so-called eighty percent of the daily average wage, uh, you say, is not reasonable. I think one of your proposal is uh, based on the fact that you conducted a survey. You found that many employers, most employers, offer a three-day paternity leave. And according to the findings of the survey, 98.7 percent of the employers offer full daily wage for the PL. You say that the 80 percent. Uh, is 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 uh, proposed because it is in line with uh, the provision for maternity leave, and I don't agree that this necessarily has to be the case. For if we talk about consistency, and also and uh, you should also include the provision about unreasonable dismissal. If the employee is being uh, dismissed unreasonably in the course of uh, a dismissal and pregnancy, then he can ask for compensation. But you've not provided a similar provision in the bill. And secondly, we're talking about the arrangement for maternity leave and the wage entitlement. You said that uh, uh, you, you already have satisfied the minimum standard of the ILO. Many countries now are offering 12 weeks of maternity leave. That's more than 10 weeks. So. Uh, before you implement the paternity leave, would you uh, start reviewing the, uh, the, 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 uh, the provisions regarding employee benefits? So there are two questions. Uh, first of all, employee protection. For paternity leave, we understand your point. Uh, the existing law protects the right to give birth, and therefore women in the course of their pregnancy cannot be dismissed by the employers. Uh, paternity leave is something else, because we are offering only three days leave for paternity leave. We have considered that maternity leave are different from those of paternity leave, and, and we believe the women warrant special protection during the course of their pregnancies. And this protection is is a major restraint on the part of the employer. The protection 
uh, means that the employer cannot uh, dismiss the female employee because of pregnancy, and even the employer had want, needs to dismiss that the pregnant woman for other reasons. So long as the woman is pregnant, the employer cannot dismiss her, unless the employee has committed uh, made very serious mistakes. That is, if the employer has certain operational needs, or he may need to uh, retrench because business is not doing well. Even so, the employer cannot dismiss the pregnant uh, employee. So it has nothing to do with maternity leave. The purpose is to protect the woman all during the course of her pregnancy, and that she cannot be dismissed. For men, they don't have pregnancy issues. Uh, it's, we're saying that a few months down the road, he may need to take three days' leave. So male and female employees usually will have a few days' leave uh, during the Chinese New Year, for example. We will not say, uh, tell, allow, uh, say, say the employer that you cannot dismiss the employee just because they're going to enjoy a few days of holiday uh, soon. But then protection of women is something special because we're talking about protection of pregnant women. Next, the maternity leave benefits. I said that the government will look at the overall economic development of Hong Kong and the, our own circumstances and review the law periodically so that we can gradually improve the uh, benefits. We are now conducting several review at the moment, a review on statutory holiday, employment contract, and a review of the minimum wage and the standard working hours. Uh, so all these different reviews are already undergoing at the moment. Uh, in respect of uh, maternity leave, we do not have a timetable for review yet. Ms. Chen Yun Han, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank all the deputations. I found that uh, one or two deputations have not come. Uh, we have seven deputations representing the business sector at least, and they make up one-third of all the deputations present. Uh, maybe the business sector would like to send out a message. Uh, a message. Uh, recently, whenever we discuss labor issues like uh, uh, you know, uh, max working hours or minimum wage a few years ago, very often the uh, business sector would object to uh, the legislative proposals. If things are tough for you, please, you know, spell it out. But is it really true that that you are facing these difficulties? I think we need to be honest. For the catering industry, uh, you need to have good locations for your restaurants. But honestly speaking, uh, you have to pay expensive rents. Uh, in my constituency, which is Wong Tai Sin Upper Estate, there is a restaurant uh, which is evicted by the link management or the link REIT. We need to be reasonable. If you operate the catering industry, very often your biggest problem is rent. But you are faced with the powerful landlords like the link REIT management, you are silent. And when we propose uh, uh, something about labor benefits, you will have strong views. Ever since the 1970s, I've been fighting for labor benefits. I think the situation is the worst now. In the 1980s, uh, we have uh, the provision for severance pay, insolvency payment, uh, and long uh, benefits for senior citizens. I think there were, uh, the, the our position was not so polarized. We talk about insolvency payment, long service payment. The amount involved was much larger than what we're looking at today. In the 1980s, uh, if there was good uh, labor relations, then all uh, the stakeholders will benefit. I would like to put a question to the, uh, the uh, association of sending the noodle manufacturers. I think we need to really ask ourselves this question. Uh, to give the male employee a few more days to take care of the wife after uh, you know, birth, that would be much better than I require him to work and then he will be he will not he will not be able to you know really serve his customers well if his his mind is still about uh, he's still worrying about whether his wife is you know doing well at home and so on. 
I understand that you are facing difficulties, but but it should not, uh, um, you know, uh, deprive employer ease of their benefits because of that. Mr. Lee has sent in a uh, submission. So, God, I got my Kang. God, I don't think the government has uh, answered Mr. Kwok Wai Kang's question, Mr. Uh, hey, you specialize in labor relations. Why is it the citizens are entitled to five days and uh, other employees are only entitled to three days? So what sort of contract are we talking about? According to the United Nations provisions you said, then following the international practice, you can only offer 80% uh, of the average daily wage. So I'd like to ask you, the government why You paid civil servants the full daily uh, daily wage uh, because you want to pacify the civil servants. So what is your rationale? The labor sector and labor unions uh, are demand that the pattern leave should be for five days. Some of my colleagues are asking for seven days. And it's even even the professionals. Some professionals would agree. So I have a question. A question for Mr. Hoy. Well, if we put up something here now, I'll, I'll let him answer my question. I'll allow Mr. Fong to speak first. Have you finished with your question, Ms. Chen? You know, I have other questions. Uh, why don't we let Mr. Fong uh, respond first? Thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Ms. Chen Yun Han, for giving me this opportunity to express my views in LegCo. I've been running this business for a long time. It's our family business. I joined industry since my birth. I have three children. Uh, I didn't have time to even look after them when they were born. I mean, you know, it, it really, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, a strenuous job. Uh, if people of our generation pass away, there will be no few and nobody will. I think the needle industry will simply, uh, you know, disappear. We have no succession. Uh, we don't have any uh, new blood. If there's nobody taking over from us uh, and those in our generation, then the business will simply be split up among, among our employees. Uh, if we join our industry, you've uh, you, you, you've joined the, the wrong industry. We have strong views about the paternity leave because it doesn't help our industry. It will only, you know, stifle us because for our employers, most of us are over the age of 40. If the uh, our, our employees' our wives want to give birth, uh, then only the mother-in-law will look after the newborn. The husband will have no time for that. If you don't believe that, then I think your political party can conduct a survey among our our industry. So I therefore strongly object to your using such uh, pretexts and being so unfair to us. We simply have no bargaining power at all. If the employee leave, we have to get down on our knees and beg them to stay. I think it's good that you give them more benefits. Well, I don't want to argue with you here, Mr. Fung. Well, I'll give you an extra 30 seconds. The employees told us that they are going to work for eight hours, but then they actually work for two hours and they're waiting for um, overtime work. So this is uh, the plight of this industry. Perhaps after the meeting, you can talk further with Ms. Chen Yunhan. Chairman, I welcome uh, Mr. Fong's very um, positive response. I would like to ask um, Mr. Hoi. Well, please, Mr. Hoi, respond to Ms. Chen's question. Thank you, Chairman. The government is only one employer in Hong Kong, and the legislation should cover all employers. And all along, we've been encouraging employers um, to give more than what the legislation requires if they can afford it. So the employers can 
um, consider their own affordability and their manpower situation to give over and above for three days. We actually we encourage it. We won't oppose it. Even without legislation, some employers are giving more than three days, more than four days, and even up to seven, 14 days. So the government's um, practice is not the best to practice. In the private sector, employers can offer more than what is required that by the legislation. I want to stress that three days are the minimum. Even if your business is not good, you should at least provide three days, and we encourage more to be offered. Mr. Chong Kok Pan. So is the time for me um, uh, from the business sector to speak. Thank you, deputations, for giving us your views. One of you said several years ago, Six, around 16% of employers are offering PL on a voluntary basis. And it's now risen up to 40%. So it shows that employers are more than willing than ever to do it. Um, it's not that uh, we must compel them to do it. Uh, we are talking about that uh, we should adopt a more humanistic approach. And if an employee is um, given PL, then the employee will be very thankful to the employer. But if legislation is put in place, and it's really, it will re really become something basic. The government officials said that some companies even have offer up to 14 days. So it all depends on. Um, individual companies' affordability. Well, it's not the case that every employer is an unscrupulous employer. In some uh, pregnancy situations, there may be cases of miscarriages and complications after birth. Now, if that happens, five days or seven days are not good enough at all. So this is altogether another question. This is a medical issue. And it has n nothing to do with PL, no matter it's three days, five days, or seven days. Of course, you have to take care of your wife um, in the postnatal period. And that can't be done over three, five, or seven days. So PL can serve some purpose, but not uh, all problems. Another friend uh, quoted a case from South Korea. This is the first time that I heard about it. I have to uh, look into it myself. Five days. Um, three days are paid, and two days are no pay. So the total income is uh, just 60%. Now, we're talking about four-fifths, 80% here today. So it seems that uh, on the surface, five days sounds better, but in effect, the employee is uh, losing out, uh, whether in South Korea is, is, is offered less than that proposed in Hong Kong. Another friend said that um, big corporations are complaining, but then many of us here today are SMEs, and big corporations um, should have enough finances to um, implement this, and that shouldn't be a problem to them. I think the crux is really the company's aff affordability. I don't think that's the issue. I think at present. Well, the re labor relations in 90% of the companies is good. So friends from the political parties so don't try to panic us by citing that there are a lot of conflicts, saying that if we don't go down this route, then um, the employer and employee will be sort of against each other. So I really agree with Ms. Chen Yin Han um, that employer employee relations have all along been good. 
but of course there are always contentious issues. But as I said, um, in ninety percent of the company's labor relations are good. So don't um, give panicky talk. I have a simple question for the administration. A, de an in a deputation said, talked about um, certification. Do we need a medical certificate to prove that the wife has given birth or is giving birth? Thank you, Chairman. In terms of PL, because we are talking about just three days before childbirth, it will be difficult to prove the relationship between the father and the child to be born because we don't have a birth certificate yet. And how can you prove that the child to be born is yours? So it's difficult. So our legislative proposal requires that after the childbirth, the father should furnish a birth um, certificate to, to entitle him for uh, PL and pay. And the in the father's column, the employee's name should be put there. So that can show that um, the employee has a relationship with the child. In overseas countries, is it are we talking about birth certificates issued by overseas authorities? Yes, that's correct. Uh, someone asked through me if there is no uh, birth certificate issued in overseas countries, uh, can we um, go by the test results of a DNA test? Now, if a child is born in another jurisdiction, if the authorities there issue a birth certificate, then he must furnish a birth certificate. It's only that when birth certificates are not available, then um, other documents are accepted. So the overriding principle is that a birth certificate should be provided if it is available. Ms. Elizabeth Quite, I think your DNA uh, question is very good. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank deputations uh, for giving us uh, your views. Your views are very good. I am from the DAB, the Women's uh, Committee, and I've received over the years many views from uh, women and it's been the aspiration for many women um, for having PL. So we welcome this Employment Amendment Bill to many women or families, three days are not enough. The administration said um, that five, there are five days for the government and three days for the private sector. And uh, he said that, uh, the official said that employ, um, the government is just one of the employers. But he, well, the government is not an ordinary um, employer per se, it can play a leading role. I think, I hope that the government can um, set a good example and lead the uh, future developments. So we welcome the government taking the lead in offering five days PL before, but using that as uh, a reason for the disparity between the two, then I don't think it stands. Um, SMEs have voiced their worries that um, there is further manpower shortage and their production costs will be driven up and so on, and that a voluntary uh, approach is advocated. All along in Hong Kong, we've been uh, promoting family-friendly policies, and many studies show that such policies can help in attracting and retaining talents and boosting staff morale and uh, fostering a sense of belonging among employees. Now, uh, I appreciate the difficulties of SMEs in recruiting um, staff, but I don't agree that with PL there will be adverse impact on the SME in terms of uh, manpower and um, costs and so on. Well, um, childbirth rate is is low in Hong Kong. We wanted to 
go up uh, so that uh, we have sufficient um, labor or workers in Hong Kong in the future. And I believe that a good um, family friendly policy will help Hong Kong's future development as a whole. So I hope the SME representatives can understand that we must have good labor relations and family friendly policies for Hong Kong to develop further. Mr. Fong talked about the plight in his industry. I um, symp sympathize with that. But, <coughs> well, I, I also come from the business sector. I think um, the crux of the problem um, has to do with his own business operating environment and reforms are needed. And you said that you weren't able to uh, be there when your children were born. And it is um, very regrettable. And so today, uh, uh, parents need or the father needs to be there when his child is born. Now, three days are not ideal or desirable, but let's get started first and we can review later. This is what I want to share with everyone today. <coughs> Ms. Squad, um, do you need any response uh, from the administration or other parties? No. Any other colleagues wishing to raise a comment or question in the first round? If not, I'll uh, let Mr. Richard Yen to uh, go for the second round. I have a question for Mr. Mark. I think the bus company is a major enterprise for a big enterprise like yours. Why is it that previously you've not considered offering you know, PL on a voluntary basis. You've not done that as, as far as I know. Uh, the New World, <coughs> KMB, New World Bus, uh, do, do you offer voluntary PL? Since you're big businesses and you say you want to attract more talents to join your companies, uh, people are now complaining that you know container truck drivers are giving up their jobs and uh, and switched all over to to drive buses because uh, container truck drivers they work for long hours traveling to the mainland they can only make about twenty thousand uh, dollars a bus company I I'm, I guess can make uh, fifteen thousand dollars and they say it's better why can't you you know do even better. I'm disappointed that you still have some reservations about this uh, legislative proposal. Secondly, the government stand <coughs> all along and their justification for allowing three days PL, uh, I will not accept that. You you refer to some studies that you've done and you, your survey covered the human resources managers. I think the scope of your study is very small. You say that they represent many companies. But compared with the 200 odd thousand employers in Hong Kong, how representative is your study? Why uh, propose three days of PL and not five, uh, as in the case of civil servants? Uh, I think we would we going to we need to. Uh, I think this going to be a long-standing discussion. But uh, uh, I don't mind whether you respond or not. But I would like, however, the uh, the uh, public bus association. Uh, uh, to to respond. Well, I represent the non-franchise bus operators. Uh, the operators of non-franchise buses. There are many. Uh, some uh, you have a single. You know, uh, people who own a single vehicle or or few. Or we also have big companies, which in a letter in a letter case they they offer paternity leave to their employees. Uh, of course, I cannot represent the franchise bus companies. The franchise companies do offer. Turn to leave, but I believe you need to verify that with the the company's concern. Secondly, Mr. Lee said that well, we well, I agree, with Mr. Lee, that we do have some, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, 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 labor resources which have yet to be released. But you must realize that there are very few women who who work as uh, bus drivers, so. We need training for these drivers. The government should, should take the lead 
so that we will be able to find the, the labor resources in the market so that we can train them. The problem we face now is that young people are not willing to join our industry. We're not just talking about bus drivers. There are you know, service mechanics, you know, uh, people who look after the, the body work of the buses. We're now going to introduce electric buses. And the first bus has now arrived, but it's not yet running on our streets. So we want you to understand that we are against uh, PL. In principle, we agree that there should be PL. But the problem is that once you implement this uh, arrangement and if we're under such pressure, we simply cannot find uh, you know, replacement workers. Regarding the wage differential between uh, drivers of buses and container trucks, I understand that container truck drivers earn more than bus companies, but the responsibilities of a bus driver is onerous. He is responsible for the safety of dozen, many several dozens of passengers, and if anything should happen, uh, he will be held uh, liable. Uh, he will, uh, he will have be subject to criminal liability, and that's why some people uh, prefer not to work as bus drivers uh, and drive container trucks instead. So you must understand that the labour force that we need, uh, uh, we simply cannot find from the, the labour market. Uh, it, 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 we will only propose that there should be labour importation when there is no other choice. We should first start by training new blood in the labour market so that there could be succession. And for the older <laughs> drivers, they cannot drive heavy vehicles like buses and canary trucks uh, because in the mainland, you're not allowed to drive heavy vehicles once you're past 60. So we want active training for the, uh, the new generation of drivers. Paternity leave is not a big issue for us, but the problem now we face is that we simply cannot recruit enough people. Mr. Hui, would you like to respond to Mr. Lee Chuk Yen's question? I agree, Ch Chairman, that our study only uh, cover one uh, organizations uh, covered by the uh, 1,800 organizations covered by the Human Resources Manager Association, and there are many SMEs which do not have uh, HR managers. So the the study cover basically sizable organizations, and according to the distribution, we found out that uh, we were able to find out about uh, the, uh, the provision of uh, PL by these sizes of organizations. 81% uh, offer one to three days of uh, uh, PL, and that, to some extent, is representative of those organizations. Anyone else? Elizabeth Quart. Chairman, I don't know whether I've heard this wrong. One deputation uh, said that with this amendment, a male employee can only apply for uh, uh, for uh, PL entitlement for once only. Is that right? No, the law doesn't set a limit on the number of times the employee can apply for, for PL. Of course, he only gives birth to a single child, and of course, he is entitled to one uh, application for PL. And if, if his wife gives birth to more than one children, then again, uh, he is entitled. What about uh, you know uh, you know several babies being born during one pregnancy? Let's say uh, the wife give birth to a quadru quadruplets. Now the children are born in succession in terms of time, right? And for each child, there should be an independent birth certificate. So we, there should be a paternity leave of uh, four times three days. Is that correct? But the law said. It, that it's about each instance of pregnancy, uh, that the male employee can only apply for three days of PL, uh, even if they are twins or quadruplets. In the case of a quadruplet being born, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chen Ka Lok, you know, uh, gave birth to twins, and he found it very difficult to look after the twins. I think you have to, you know, consider this point further. I believe you've not considered this point. Do we have? Oh yeah, someone from one of yeah, Mr. Chen. I'll give you one minute. I think Mr. Lee has already left. I think it may be too late for me to raise this point. What I like to say is that in Hong Kong, we no longer have unscrupulous employers. We have to beg our employees to work for us. There are many unscrupulous employees instead. Chairman, could you exercise your influence? 
uh, so that SMEs uh, like ourselves will not have to really, uh, you know, uh, go through all this hassle because of holidays. We want to import labor so that uh, we don't have to struggle, uh, you know, uh, uh, in the midst of the labor shortage. That is my request. Okay, we've heard your view. Is the report. Well, the chairman talked about, you know, <coughs> twins, quadruplets, and triplets uh, being born. According to the proposed amendment, uh, 1512B, uh, in the case of still birth, the applicant can obtain certain document, documents and then he would be entitled to PL. What about miscarriage? I think the baby is not, has not died at birth, but before birth. Uh, originally required for a birth certificate, then, but in the case of stillbirth, you do not require uh, the applicant to provide for a birth certificate. Why doesn't this apply to miscarriage as well? I think the arrangement is the same for, mis for maternity leave arrangements. The law spell out, uh, provide for definition of miscarriage. Miscarriage means, uh, uh, you know, uh, a woman discharges some, uh, you know, products which cannot survive uh, uh, before uh, uh, the expiry of 28 weeks of pregnancy. Then, according to the ordinance, a woman is still entitled to the maternity leave. By the same arrangement, uh, 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 for paternity leave uh, arrangements, if the employee's uh, spouse, you know, uh, uh, has a miscarriage, uh, twenty, uh, you know, uh, before the expiry of twenty-eight weeks, then he will not be entitled. But if there is an incident of stillbirth after twenty-eight weeks of pregnancy, then the employee will still be entitled to the PL. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Hui, when he He, when he answered my question about the difference between the protection of women in the course of pregnancy and, well, the the, the le a legal advisor in responding to an, a letter from our uh, from from us, he said that the law should protect the employees so that they will not be dismissed because they take paternity leave, as in the case of employees who would not be dismissed uh, because of the taking maternity leave. You said that uh, if the take leave is like other leave, uh, because women <coughs> uh, Have you taken the into consideration the EOC's uh, legal opinion? I think the employee will only be entitled to PL because the wife is, is going to, to give birth. Have you discussed with the EOC the different legal opinion that uh, that you have, uh, Mr. Hui? I think we will have time to discuss the that response uh, from the DFJ. I think, Mr. Hui, you can uh, wait until we discuss the uh, uh, those uh, uh, responses from the administration. Do is anyone else among the deputations who would like to speak, Mr. Tam? from the Catering Association. Chairman, I'd like to reiterate uh, one point on behalf of our association. We are not considering the, 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 the monetary issue when we discuss the paternity leave question. Like the representatives of the bus company, our problem is that we have no young, young people not willing to join the industry. If our employees are entitled to paternity leave, for SMEs, which don't hire many people, then the employer will be will will have to work extra hard. Uh, if the employee, you know, if the waiter or the uh, worker does the washing of dishes, take <coughs> a maternity leave, the employer will have to, to, to you know, uh, take up the work. For for restaurants operate by SMEs, uh, there's so. Many of them are, are work 
trying very hard to recruit staff. Situation is so serious already. If we now <coughs> propose to <coughs> off uh, give paternity leave, just imagine you know, uh, you know <coughs> how the situation will further deteriorate. Chairman, I think labor relations within the cable industry has been very good. We understand the importance of uh, harmonious labor relations. W w Hong Kong is a free society. And the Labor Department has its own statistics. Many businesses now, I think 40% of the of the businesses in Hong Kong already uh, offer PL. The problem is with the SMEs. For the big corporations, and I won't name many names, uh, they have, I think more than 30 years ago, they offer many uh, benefits to their employees whenever we're able to afford it. Uh, well, our employees were treated to free vacations and so on and so forth. But the SMEs really are facing uh, an acute labor shortage. This is already a very, very grave uh, uh, The situation is already very grave. So I hope that the paternity leave will not be made mandatory. It should be voluntary instead. Mr. Paul Chair, uh, to respond to Mr. Tam's point, if there are some SMEs, some really small enterprises hiring one or two workers, and if the, if the employer cannot find a uh, uh, replacement worker, then I think it's appropriate that we should allow for some flexibility for such employers. But the policy intent is to ensure that employee benefits are protected and that there shouldn't you shouldn't and that you will not allow for wages in lieu of uh, of the leave unless there's a reasonable defense. So I'd like to ask the employer representatives if we allow some flexibility so that the employee can will take fewer than three days of PL, or they only take part of the uh, PL, and the rest of the entitlement uh, they can accept. Wa you know, you know, wages in lieu of the the, the leave. Uh, would you accept that? I think. I think for under the employment ordinance, they can take five consecutive uh, days of leave. Plus to three days, they can take eight days of leave. Otherwise, the employer, our worker, simply resign because uh, uh, they say if, because we are denying the, them of the entitlement for paternity leave. Once we enact the legislation to implement paternity leave, I think uh, the leave should be given to the employee. Many people have also uh, pointed out that after a woman has given birth, especially more than uh, day women, they are under a lot of pressure in the in the area of work and the family. Many women have told me that after they've given birth, they really suffer from uh, postnatal uh, depression. So my question is whether flexibility should be given to the male. Um, employees, should he be given a choice so that he can get, get some more money for, say, buying milk powder for the baby and so on? I think if that's done, well, I think the initiative should lie with the employee. I think it uh, goes against the legislative intent. Mr. Yip? Yes, Mr. Yip. Please be uh, brief. Yes. I'm a father myself. I don't think there should be payment in lieu of PL. I think it's a f the father's responsibility to take care of the family and the child, and it can't be measured or substituted by money. And SMEs have been saying that they have difficulties in recruiting workers. But then, what is the um, problem? Um, well, even if you are uh, um, offering a high pay, is it the case that you will find it hard to recruit manpower, Mr. Tan? I 
I'm happy to hear that Employees Association's uh, support PL, but uh, is uh, are against legislation. I think legislation is there to protect workers' basic rights. And we can't re just count on the employers to do it on a voluntary basis. Well, some employers might even um, encourage employees to give up their PL if uh, the discretion is left to the employers. And whether payment, there should be payment in lieu of PL. We don't agree with that based on the cases we have encountered. There are different um, sectors in the service industry. A worker once told me that when she gave birth to a child and she applied for several days leave, and she was even willing to get no pay leave, apply for no pay leave, the employer said no. And uh, the employer said that you should find someone to replace you. and. Ultimately, she uh, didn't get any pay, and she had to go the extra mile to get someone to um, stand in her shoes when she was taking leave. Now, it's, I don't think there should be a choice of payment in lieu of PL. If it is at the initiative of the employee, is it uh, okay? Well, then that will be encouraging the, da the father not to discharge his responsibility as a father. Thank you very much. We've had um, the deputation's views, and I thank the deputations for coming here to express your comments. If you have any written submissions that you want to uh, hand to us, please do so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. All right, let's continue with the second part of the meeting, and that is on the outstanding issues raised at the meeting on the 15th of April 2014. There are two papers submitted by the administration in response to issues raised by the members and legal advisor. The first one is CB bracket 21436. 1314 bracket 04 and the other one is CB bracket 2 1482 1314 bracket 0B uh, 05 I mean perhaps the administration can you take us through these two papers thank you Mr. Hoy thank you very much chairman <coughs> the first is one four three six thirteen fourteen zero four. This is response to three issues uh, raised by members. The first is about the legality of payment in lieu of PL. The bill requires employers to give PL to employees. And D, if the employee furnishes a birth uh, certificate, then a, a pay should be effected, i.e. if the employee requests for PL, the employer is um, breaking the law if he refuses to pay uh, give PL so that's not uh, legal for payment in lieu of PL survey on PL in annex 1 we uh, give you a report of the survey conducted among 18 human resources managers clubs the results are listed there in detail uh, we have a sent questionnaire as to 
1,580 member organizations, a total of 576 completed questionnaires, a rate response rate of 36.5 percent, and 38.7 percent to two three member organizations indicated that they provide a PL. The size of the organizations. So the larger the number of employees, the higher is the chance of a provision of PL. Um, for some sectors, like the banking industry, um, they rank high in providing PL. Now, for SMEs, um, they few of them provide PL. The duration of PL, 81.6% provide one to three days PL. Four days, 2.7%. Um, Five days, 12.6 percent. 0.9 percent provide 14 days. 220 respondent organizations provide full pay, and two organizations, 0.9 percent, offered 80 percent of the employees' wages as PL pay, and one respondent organization, which provided 14 days of PL, did not offer any pay. Now, as for documentary proof, a majority of them asked for birth certificates. Um, the bulk of them also accept documents issued outside of Hong Kong. It's not the last time the um, race uh, questions about exclusion of female respondents from PL. A member suggested that the government should ask the EOC on whether the proposal in the bill of excluding female employees from PL would give rise to an issue of discrimination. The EOC's response is uh, set out in Annex 3. The response is this. Yes. The EOC's reply is that a female same sex partner of a child's mother is not recognized as having the rights and responsibilities of a parent. Same sex marriage or partnership are not legally recognized. There is no legislation on sexual orientation discrimination. So, in this circumstances, exclusion of the female same sex partner from paternity leave would not contravene any discrimination legislation. Now, but in terms of general equality, the same sex partner may be regarded as being in a similar position to a father who has to take care of the newborn and the mother around the time of childbirth. So, on this view, it would advance equality in general if similar leave could be given to the same sex partner. In the last paragraph, the Commissioner lays out his views on legislation on sexual orientation discrimination. On these two papers, any questions from members? First, Mr. Tommy Chung, Chairman. I have uh, certain remarks towards what the administration said. I don't know what kind of society we're having today. I can take PL if a certificate contains my well includes my name as a father. There is no restriction on whether there is legal marriage or whether you um, are having um, several um, sex partners and so on. <coughs> but but you are talking about forty six thousand fathers to be, and that amounts to a total of tens of thousands of leave days. But well, that's a quite an amount, I would say. But my worry is that as long as my name is included in a birth certificate, then I am entitled to three days. So I can enjoy many, many days eventually. Well, you said that it's the responsibility of the employee to give um, um, proof. 
but that may be problematic. Say, if you s furnish a um, birth certificate from Thailand um, with the name of the father in, in the Thai language, well, that may be very problematic. How can an employer certify whether the um, document is um, authentic or not? Well, they are making so much noise Well, out there. I can't go on. Now, I, th I think it seems the government seems very generous. Well, why doesn't the government foot the bill? And you are paying for the PL for so many civil servants. Well, why doesn't the government foot the bill for the private companies as well? The uh, labor unions are asking so much from the employers. Now, the SMEs will have a tough time. The taxi driver, well, he's been here since uh, 7 o'clock or so, and he's been com com complaining to me. He's not from my sector. He's from the taxi uh, trade, but he's still complaining to me. So I have another question here. <coughs> um, there is no same-sex marriage here now, but then we are now scrutinizing a bill in that regard, and which may be endorsed uh, one day in the future. Now, there, is, there are two women in a same-sex um, relationship, and then one of them may be entitled to PL ultimately after going through a um, surgery. Well, well, if I have been, if I am a transsexual person and my partner gives birth to a child, then I'm also entitled to PL, and that doesn't seem very right to me. So please respond. <coughs> if a person can get his name on the birth certificate in a legal way, well, there are certain legal requirements on that. Um, it now it stands as the legislation now stands it has to be a male now as for the uh, marriage amendment bill which is being scrutinized and that um, may allow for the transaction to be to has, have his name on the father's column on the birth certificate in the future then we will consider that as complying with the um, provisions in the bill. <coughs> so we're talking about um, many more times of the number of days uh, that you mentioned. You said that uh, 40,000 uh, fathers to be times three, but then the number may go beyond that. Now, say if my ID card contains the name Zhang Yuyan, and then there is a Chinese uh, code for Zhang Yuyan. I've well, some of us don't have our Christian name um, in that <coughs> ID card. And, um, and if n not the exact, well, if, if, n if say, the, uh, the name that appears on my ID card uh, isn't exactly the same on the birth certificate will I still be allowed PL for well I hope that the administration can clarify and my question is for for my child born outside of Hong Kong say I cite the example of Thailand uh, my name may be translated in a different way and it doesn't have the Chinese name um, exactly, my Chinese name exactly as it appears in my ID card, then I get that um, birth certificate to my employer. Is it good enough? Does it have to be exactly the same name that as I appear? That has appeared on my ID card. Okay. We've not uh, studied the birth certificates in all jurisdictions. That simply is not possible. Uh, 
uh, our understanding is that in, for Hong Kong, <coughs> we have many cross-border marriages where ch children are born in the mainland. In the mainland, uh, the birth uh, uh, certificate documents would uh, include the name of the person. In other jurisdictions where there are, uh, you know, disputes, Builds, the Labor Department will provide for mediation, and if the mediation fails, then uh, the matter can be taken to the court for adjudication. I must emphasize that the the evidence provided must be authentic. If the employer pro, uh, submits a forged document or use a, a, a false document, then according to the Crimes Ordinance, it is a criminal offense. Uh, if he wants to take three days of PL and take such a major risk, I don't think uh, uh, you know. <clears throat> you know, it's worth uh, the while. Anyway, that's what the law requires. I understand that the evidence is to be submitted by the employee, and I'm not saying that the employee is making a forged claim. I understand that the the employer has a criminal liability in that case. My question question is that for an employer and employee, and other than children born in the mainland of China, I'm not saying that we rule out children born outside of China. Well, but the law covers our jurisdictions other than than the mainland. How how can the employer verify? Uh, the information. I mean, the, the the document may not contain the Chinese name Cheng Yu Yan. So, what are we going to do in that scenario, Mr. Hai? Uh, yeah, we understand your point, Cheng, Mr. Cheng. Uh, this bill has yet to be implemented in Hong Kong, and we've never accepted any, uh, you know, documents uh, uh, provided from by other jurisdictions to uh, to 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 support the application for. Uh, PL entitlement. That's why, with the impl after implementing the ordinance for a year, we will conduct a review to see whether or not there are problems that we cannot uh, resolve. But for all benefits under the uh, employment ordinance and where there are disputes, if employers and employees have disputes over the authenticity of certain documents, then uh, uh, they can refer the matter to the Labor Department for uh, mediation, and if that fails, then the matter can be taken to court. That's the avenue that is now available. The Chairman, I understand that my time is running up, and if need be, I can go for the second round. So we, I'll give the floor to N. Chang, first of all. Uh, Chairman, I also have a few questions. But first of all, uh, Mr. Tommy Chang had expressed his concern. Earlier, we had lots of discussion and we all have uh, uh, the same concern. We've also undertaken a study and we found that there are many men in our society who will deny that they are the, the father of the child. There are very few instances where people will just, f for the sake of the three days leave, uh, claim to be the father of the child, uh, to take that you know, lifelong responsibility just for uh, three days leave. It's, 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 it's unimaginable. I don't think the problem you raise should uh, arise. I also ask, like to ask the administration this question. When an employee before an employee applies for uh, paternity leave, it's four weeks before birth, or ten weeks after the birth of the child. So does it mean that if the employee if the, the employee only need to provide medical uh, document uh, before uh, uh, he can apply? And secondly, during this period of time, will can the three uh, uh, days of paternity leave be uh, taken separately? He can take one day of uh, PL leave uh, this week and another next week and so on. And thirdly, can the uh, male employee, let's say after the wife is taken, given birth, he will keep company uh, with his wife for two days and then since there's a lot of work to be done at the office, he will not take the third day of uh, PL and the company pays him for for the third day, uh, so would that be allowed or is it not allowed? And that he has definitely, uh, that you will force him to take the third day of uh, PL. Chairman, there are three questions. First of all, 
uh, the question is uh, that the uh, four the four weeks before and ten weeks after birth, and what sort of documents the the applicant has to submit. When a man needs to take uh, uh, PL before the child is born, to establish his relation with the baby, in the bill we propose that normally he would tell the employer, and if the employer is satisfied that uh, that, uh, that that that. Then I mean he, the employer will only need to, uh, you know, talk verbally to the employer. But the employer has doubts and ask him whether he's really married, and he would like concrete evidence. Then the employer has the right to ask the employee to provide a written statement and specifying uh, when he would need to take the PL. And that he is the the father of the child uh, about to be born. So you need to make a, a written statement. And after that, I think uh, either the statement will you know will help establish his entitlement for the PL. And after he's taken the paternity leave, I think you have to wait until the child is born. And after he has obtained the birth certificate for the child, and on that certificate uh, his name appears on the column for father, and he can use that birth certificate to to get pay payment for his uh, PL. So there are two stages here. The first stage is before the birth of the child. He if he needs to take leave. He needs to serve prior notice. He needs to make a statement. And when he claims uh, the, the the entitlement, then he will also need to provide the birth certificate as evidence. To answer your second question, the answer is yes. The three days of leave could be split, uh, can be taken separately, and not necessarily consecutively. Thirdly, wages in lieu of uh, holiday. And this is something which many employees are concerned about. We've said already that if the employee is entitled to three days of leave and the employer doesn't give him those three days of leave, then the employer will be uh, in breach of the law. Ms. Chang, if the employee is willing uh, to waive one day to, uh, of his uh, PL, that is not allowed. The employer has the, the duty to offer him three days of PL. If he decides not to take uh, the leave. Could he take the leave later on? Yes, yes. In the end, I say at the end of the year, uh, sometimes even on Sundays or, or, or during statutory holidays, uh, workers are allowed to work overtime, and the employee will employer will pay him, uh, uh, you know, wages uh, in compensation. So can we deal with it uh, in the same manner as we deal with uh, public holidays? Well, the the employee, the employer must uh, uh, give him all the three days of leave uh, uh, within ten weeks after the, the the birth of the child. Chairman, I think the legislative intent is that we want the father to be able to look after the child. Uh, 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 <clears throat> when the wife is giving birth, or also learn to take care of the baby. What? But if the baby is born overseas, and you allow you give him the PL, he simply won't won't need it. Of course, we say that the employer has to give him the PL, but the employee is not spending the time to visit the baby or look after his child, and this could. Defeat the purpose of the bill. If you know that he's taking leave and staying at home, but he's not spending the time to look after his ch wife and the baby, uh, when, do we still have to give him the PL? Chairman, the law stipulates that he would be re required to take leave. We understand that after the employer has taken leave, how much time and effort he will spend looking after the child or the mother. Uh, this is something which the law cannot cover. If we want to lay down a standard saying that during his leave he must look after the child or the mother of the child, 
that simply cannot be provided for in the law and, and it simply cannot be enforced. Otherwise, it will result in uh, uh, litigation. I believe for most people, well, most employees who are become who become the father for the first time, I'm sure they will take the time uh, to look after the ch the baby and the mother, even if the child were born uh, overseas. Uh, in the case of Hong Kong, uh, many of the spouses uh, live in the mainland, so it's not that far away. So if we give the the employee the the, applic the flexibility. Then he will be able to enjoy the paternity leave, and he should be able to look after the child and <clears throat> and his family uh, living in the mainland. Normally, the uh, uh, father would be very very uh, uh, keen. But then, what I'm worried about is that people will take the leave uh, and not do what. Uh, what uh, he's supposed to do according to the legislative intent of the bill. Yes, the intent is that he should be able to use his leave uh, to, to, to look after the, to, to the child. But then, I mean, just in the case of the, 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 the rest day on Sunday, we cannot guarantee that the employee will take his rest on Sunday. So, so while we understand, but we uh, we want our uh, law to be able to cater to most circumstances, but in some cases where we may not be able to fulfill, satisfy the original legislative intent, but there's no way we can uh, say that the employee must do must look after the baby uh, uh, during the, his uh, paternity leave. Mr. Paul Chair, Chairman, I understand that the present proposal is that we are dividing, we're talking about two types of uh, labor relations, uh, uh, those uh, who had uh, a continuous uh, employment uh, relationship, in which case the employee will be entitled to paternity leave without pay. And he will need to work consecutively for 40 weeks uh, before he is entitled. So two questions: Why do you make it so complicated, and 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 have these two separate arrangements? So people may have the understanding that if they take paternity leave, they will have paid, but then only to realize that they are, in one case, in one for one category, they will be entitled to pay, in the other, it's not. Are you saying uh, is it your intention to benefit those who have uh, been employed for a long time? Why the two uh, uh, arrangements? I think that arrangement uh, is in line with the arrangement for maternity leave. For maternity leave provision, if he has uh, worked continuously for 40 weeks, then he will be entitled to maternity leave. He, if you want to get paid maternity leave, you need to work for 40 weeks uh, before he will be paid. When the LAB discusses issue, uh, if it was of opinion that uh, the arrangement for paternity leave should be in line with the arrangements for maternity leave, so the condition for entitlement to paternity leave and paternity leave pay are the same as those for uh, maternity leave. As to why we require the minimum uh, uh, period of uh, service before the employee will be entitled, I think that there is such a provision in the entire employment ordinance. For statutory <coughs> holidays, the employee will need to have worked for at least three weeks uh, uh, before he will be entitled. Yeah, three months, rather, if it's not. Work for three months, and he will be able to enjoy the Saturday holiday, but he will not be paid. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's the usual arrangement under the present employment ordinance. So your overriding consideration is consistency, right? <coughs> so uh, the longer you are employed in an employment with an employer, the more benefits you will get. That's another principle, is that right? The arrangement is there 
to be in line with the arrangement for maternity leave. That's the view of the LAB. So we try to align the arrangement for PL and ML, and that uh, can be accepted more easily by everyone, we believe. Dr. Kenneth Chen. Thank you, Chairman. When we study these legislative provisions, we can use our imagination to um, see how an employee can also, uh, make use of the loopholes to his best advantage. Well, it all depends on how we make our moral judgments in a society. Say if uh, in a society where the moral standards are very low and we believe that employees are, you know, having um, free sex all the time and then um, a child may be born, say, once every three, five or seven months. So that's it, the kind of scenario that uh, a colleague mentioned just now and he said he's worried about it. But I don't think the Hong Kong society has de de deteriorated to that extent yet. Well, there may be individuals who may uh, be in that sort of scenario or situation, but we should not uh, take it as uh, the yardstick for coming up with our legislation. We shouldn't be um, constructing our legislation based on these uh, few exceptional cases. So that's a, a judgment call, I think. I. I don't think we should exaggerate things. Um, it would not be of any help. If you want to quote extreme cases to argue your case, and that's not um, reasonable. And, and you should not use that to overturn the original legislative intent. But what we should really focus on is that whether it should be three days, five days, or even better arrangements in the future so that we can strike the right balance between the employer and the employee. The employer will not be un under undue pressure, and the employer will feel that he's being respected and he has a stronger sense of belonging in the company. I think that the our discussion should go along that direction. Our legal advisor has uh, sent a letter to the administration, and that was issued on the 14th of April, or rather the 11th of April. Has the administration given us a reply? Yes, a reply is with us already. Well, thank you. Um, the issue that I want to raise is about documentary requirements. It's a very complicated issue. Because in some places, um, there may be third birth certificates issued, and it, it might be difficult to translate um, the language. So I think we have to be very clear on the costs to be borne. I think it should be the responsibility of the employee to bear that cost, the translation cost. <coughs> Why did I raise that question? We may uh, know some friends who have a right of abode in um, overseas countries who don't speak English and they have a spouse there and the birth certificate there um, needs to be translated and we may need a consulate general in Hong Kong um, to certify that and maybe we need to look for some official authorities in the place to uh, do the verification so that may uh, take uh, <coughs> costs. So this may be a cumbersome process. So in terms of the details, I think we have to um, be more careful. There may not be many cases uh, like that, but we do have uh, cases, so we have to be prudent. <coughs> also, I thank the government um, for supplying this, um, the results of the survey conducted in 2008. I originally asked for a full report, but then the government gave us an extract of the results. Well, there are many follow-up questions uh, from that. Say, in the uh, <coughs> concerning documentary requirements in Annex One. Um, in the survey that that, that time, doc, um, 
marriage certificate, um, birth certificate, etc., etc. Well, what is included in this etc. category? Um, colleagues may be business people here and or SMEs. So we would like to take reference uh, from the results of that survey so that we can um, better implement the requirements of the law. And in your survey, you also listed out the distribution of industries providing PL. Oh, sorry, actually you did the survey in June 2012. But did you ask clearly the respondents um, the actual situation um, in which uh, PL was taken? And actually say how many um, employees did take that PL? <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. Several questions there. If the document um, or evidence was not drafted in Chinese, who is going to bear the translation cost? We don't ha yet have um, operation experience on that front. If it is on the mainland, the um, document will be in Chinese, and in Europe and the U.S., the documents will probably be in English. There will not be much of a problem there. But if it is a language other than Chinese and English, um, I, I, I'm sure that there may be ways of resolving the issue. They can look up look up the terms in the dictionary, and so on and so forth. If Ultimately, if the issues cannot be resolved, we will not take the case immediately to the court for adjudication. Um, the Labor Department can step in and do mediation. And then we'll try to help um, the, the two parties to um, interpret the documents. If that is done, we don't need to uh, pass the case over to the court. We don't have yet um, operational experience, but in a year's time, we will do a review. And if irregularities are found in that year and issues are found to be unresolved, so we will um, look into them and do a review. Uh, allow me to be long-winded, uh, Chairman, on this issue. Um, it's not that you, you don't have. I I I I I'm, I believe that the immigration department may have um, experience in that regard. It's just that the labor department doesn't have such real relevant experience. There are 28 uh, members in the U EU, some um, 30 languages, Italian, French, German, and so on. Say, if I'm a Hong Kong PR, permanent resident, my child is bur born in a U EU country, not an English-speaking one, and uh, he will have a birth certificate using a language other than English. Now, if I have to apply for a ID card or as, as an SAR passport for this child, and that I need that birth certificate to prove that this child is mine, so that sh must have been certain experience accumulated by the say by the immigration department. I don't think you have uh, discharged your duty in um, exploring that area. I, as a electrical, I'm, uh, I'm reminding you to take reference from other departments' experience. Thank you, Cha um, thank you, uh, the member, for your for your uh, comment. We will certainly learn from um, other government departments. But what I'm talking about is <coughs> labor uh, disputes, how to deal with them, and say also we don't need to the document to be translated in full. Say perhaps we can go to. Um, the website and to say to have a to to look at the relevant size and have and then have an idea of the kind of documents that is and that may also suffice. So we will review our operation as uh, we go along. We won't uh, wait until or we wait until, uh, we won't wait for one year before resolving issues. We would uh, go by. Our experience as the legislation is implemented and try to resolve issues as early as possible. Um, on the issue of documentary uh, proof, um, the three 
um, types of documents managed to make up the bulk birth certificate, marriage certificate, and proof of delivery. So we didn't ask her too de in a too detailed way um, the kind of documentary proof I requested. So the three types make up the bulk of the doc documentary proof accepted. Um, the well, the questions are to probe the PL system, i.e., the number of days provided and whether PL is offered, and we didn't go in depth to um, find out the real situation how many people took the leave and so on. Well, I'm quite disappointed. If you have the figures relating to the actual situation, then that will be better. Mr. Raymond Chen. Mr. Tong Mi Zhang asked a host of questions, and one of it has to do with transactions. The government hasn't responded to that. So I hope that the administration can clarify. Um, does transaction, a transaction have the right to apply for um, PL? A woman can be turned into a woman according to the um, Court of Appeals ruling after the 17th of July. This transaction can get married to a woman. Now, if his wife um, is going to give birth, can the transaction apply for PL? Now, the transaction person doesn't have the capability to give to give birth to a child, but um, the PL depends on the birth certificate, certificate and not a DNA test. So can the government be more specific on whether the transaction can apply for PL? Because the, uh, the transaction doesn't have a sort of blood relationship with the child. <coughs> According to the legislation, the, it is the biological father or the legal father who can apply for PL. Well, no matter um, what the sex of the or the gender of the employee is, if his name is put in the father's column of the birth certificate, he can apply for PL. <coughs> well, thank you for the administration's um, clarification. So I would like to say to employers, don't be too worried. If a transaction is going to be the father of a child, I'm sure that he will take care of the child. He would not be uh, trying to deceive the employer either. And well, it's very improbable that he will try to deceive um, the employer. Chung Kwok Pan, Porcha, three minutes, and Tommy Chang. Three minutes are not s sufficient. Why the rush? Well, we can um, hold the meeting till 2 p.m. if you like. Yellow button. Okay. We'll ask questions again in the next meeting. Chairman. Uh, when. Well, Tommy John doesn't need to actually, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, 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 play to the gallery. Uh, those people who accuse other people of being exaggerating are the ones who are, uh, you know, doing that exactly. I don't agree with our colleagues and my officials who said, and the officials said that we will defer to the lab, uh, LAB to, 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 to adjudicate. I think our, it is our duty that we should not enact ambiguous legislation and, and refer cases to the LAB to, to adjudicate. I think we should clarify everything. I hope our colleagues will not uh, believe that, oh, it's going to be a windfall, we're going to enjoy paternity leave, we don't need to go bother with the details. It is exactly because the, devil, the, the devils are in the details. As legislators, I don't think we should uh, Sensationalist lie things uh, and, uh, and say it's good that we have paternity leave now. We we have a duty to see what the loopholes in the bill. We can't say 
that just because we think that if we have a hundred thousand people applying for paternity leave, they are all, you know, uh, uh, you know, out of a hundred thousand, if ten, uh, you know, live uh, overseas, what, what? What, what what should we do? Uh, uh, should we only review the law when problems arise? I think you say that they will review one year after the enactment of the bill. Uh, the government always try to please the majority, and it comes and, and it comes up with a, a bill that is neither here or there, and is and could be challenged. And this is not something I want to see. I think the government should think carefully as to how. All these ambiguities should be clarified. For example, someone, a uh, baby who was born outside of Hong Kong without a birth certificate in Chinese, how can you guess uh, whether or not it's authentic? So our colleagues, especially those who are playing to the gallery, think that, uh, that uh, we should only uh, focus on how many days of uh, paternity leave uh, there will be rather than, you know, uh, Addressing the real issues, the law, uh, the requirements under the law is very clear. For babies born outside of Hong Kong, the father would need to provide a, a you know birth certificate issued by the authorities in the jurisdiction concerned. If that jurisdiction issue documents similar to our birth certificates, then the authority must provide for that. Of course, we cannot insist that the birth certificate uh, must be in Chinese because uh, Chinese is not the language. If we require the certificate to be in Chinese and English, then countries which uh, which do not uh, uh, use Chinese and English will not be covered. And that's not fair. But if the jurisdiction doesn't issue birth certificate, I believe most countries do. But in case a jurisdiction doesn't provide for issues birth certificates, they have to uh, provide, uh, you know, uh, other uh, documentary evidence uh, before the applicant can uh, use it as evidence to to apply for PL. Well, I hope you will go back and think about uh, uh, this before you give an answer. What you're proposing is not fair to the employee or the employer. If I submit a birth certificate, uh, evidence of uh, birth, and the server doesn't have my name in Chinese, how can I apply for a PL from my employer? And how can the employer verify whether or not he should allow for the paternity leave? The law should be drafted in a better manner so that there won't be so all these arguments, and you shouldn't, you know, spoil the. A harmonious labor relationship. On the one hand, you ask the employees to be good to the employee. On the other hand, you are coming up with this proposal, which will spoil the the, the labor relation. I think another choice is f uh, that upon the enactment of this uh, bill, the labor department should uh, issue guidelines explaining what would be the the uh, the recognized uh, birth certificate. Uh, uh, certificate documents in the EU, for example, they have served four or five official languages. For uh, countries with, where uh, English is not the official language, you have to specify what sort of uh, you know uh, documentary evidence you would accept as evidence of birth. Please. Consider either doing it in a bill, or you undertake to give issue a guideline to employ or employees. Uh, Mr. Hoi, we we'll certainly consider how, how we may come up with the guideline that you suggested, Mr. Chung Pan. I think my question is similar to those of Tommy Jung. Mr. Hoi. Uh, when he answered my question, that is, if you uh, grant him, give him the paternity leave, but the employee doesn't spend the time looking after his wife or baby, uh, I think the government should try to pluck the loophole rather than saying that you can't, you know, you know, you know, you know, uh, do any, uh, you know, provide f for uh, any remedy to that problem in the law. We heard about complaints from SME saying that you're giving too much benefits to the employees, uh, but they say they don't mind if you really benefit the employees. But you know that the person takes the leave and doesn't use it, you know, uh, to take care of his child and the baby. So 
as an employer, I'll be really angry if that happens. That is, I give him the lead, the, the, the lead time to look after the child and baby, and he go and work part time elsewhere. So you must pluck such loopholes. You can't say that uh, it's difficult to draft uh, draft that into the ordinance, Mr. Hoy. We understand uh, members' concern. If that scenario arises, the employer would be uh, angry. So in drafting the law, we've also considered this uh, in detail. We have a legislative intent, but sometimes it may not be possible to exhaust all possible scenarios and cover them uh, under the, the legislative intent. If the person takes the leave, uh, uh, what does he have to do before he will get, up, uh, uh, get the paternity leave? I think operational-wise, it's, it's difficult. So we've heard members' uh, views, and we've undertaken to con review the ordinance uh, one year after its enactment to see whether there are any inadequacies and whether or not the worries expressed by members are prevalent, and then we need to come up with solutions. We'll certainly review that in a year's time. We already see some inadequacies, and you uh, you say you will conduct a review a year, in a year's time. Why don't you, you know, why are you creating all these disputes and arguments, uh, in, uh, you know, in the bill? Like Tommy Jones said, we already see some loopholes now. Why don't you pluck them now? Why are you saying that we should wait for a year? If the problem will still be there a year from now, why don't we deal with it now? Yeah, when San. At this stage, uh, uh, if we have to stipulate in the law that the employee must spend the paternity leave looking after the newborn and his wife, uh, only then can he uh, uh, get the paternity leave. I believe that will be even more controversial. There will be even more arguments between the employer and employees because simply no standard to define. Uh, the extent of care he need to provide to his family and the child uh, before it's ex uh, there's no need to debate over this. I think uh, if the child is born outside of Hong Kong and the applicant does not leave Hong Kong, that is evidence enough. But what about the father in Hong Kong? Even if he takes a leave, he doesn't look after his child and, and mother. And again, there's nothing you can do. Okay, I'll allow Mr. Portier to ask his uh, question for the second round. Chairman, the present proposal is that for an employee to apply for paternity leave, he would need to satisfy the notice period uh, three months before uh, birth or two days before he actually takes a leave. If you want to apply for the wages, he will need to provide evidence to prove that he is the father of the child. Otherwise, he will not be entitled to the leave or the wages. The problem is that if the employer uh, has a good relationship with the employer and they decide that, uh, that uh, he will not take the leave and he will take the uh, wages in lieu. So if he want to make use of Luho, so if he if he doesn't satisfy the, the notice period or supply the relevant evidence, the employer doesn't have the duty to pay him, give him the leave and the pay. So how are you going to deal with that loophole? Well, according to the bill, the the the, the leave itself and the pay are two separate uh, things. If the employer uh, were to do what you suggested, he would have to take a big risk. That day he paid the employee and asked him not to take the paternity leave. After he's paid the employee, the employee can still take the leave. After he's received the payment, and the employee insists that he will still have to take his leave, then the employer has no choice. Well, apparently it is a policy that you don't allow the two to to come to compromise, and that is mandatory that for the employee to take the leave and be paid. If there is a good, uh, uh, if the, the employer and employee deliberately not serve the notice or uh, provide the, the supporting document, then he will not be bound by the provision of the bill. And you can't prove that the employer is, is acting illegally. Of course, the enforcement of the law uh, depends whether or not the employee is willing. I was saying that the two parties agree. 
and it's in the case of all employee benefits. If you want to prosecute the employer, we might need the uh, employee to come forward as a witness. You would, uh, if the employee doesn't want to come forward as, to testify, then we simply cannot enforce the law. I'm just citing this example that if someone can very conveniently and legally, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, bypass this legislation so long as the employer and the employee come to some agreement among themselves. Is that right? And if I'm right, what will you do to pluck, pluck that loophole? I will say to the employer that if you do this, first of all, if the employee renege on his words, uh, he was the employer and he report to us, we can still prosecute the employer for not giving the employee the paternity leave. But you can't prosecute because the employee has not, uh, you know, served his notice on time or provide the evidence. And it's and it's difficult to hold them accountable afterwards. Isn't there a loophole there? Of course, if we want to prosecute an employer, we need sufficient evidence. I understand. So have you ever considered this issue? And if you can't, why don't you answer Mr. J's question uh, at the next meeting? I think the arrangement for the paternity leave is that we will require the employee to take his leave before he is paid. If the employer pays the employee, whether the employer takes a lot, takes the leave and whether he is paid are two separate issues. As in the case of our employee benefits, if the uh, employee deliberately chooses not to take any leave and he doesn't report to the to us, then there's nothing we can do. It's, it's the same with maternity leave, fraternity leave, statutory holidays, and rest days. If even I think if if the if it's past the, the notice period, then even if the employee reneges uh, on his words, you still can't prosecute the employer and hold him accountable. And this will defeat your purpose of not allowing the employer employee to, to, to have the choice. Yes, we understand. For all criminal prosecution, there is a time limit. Norm normally, I don't think you've answered my question. Well, of course, I know that there is a time limit for prosecution. And even for people who don't testify and so on, you can't even prosecute. But if someone does it, you know, legally, uh, something that is uh, that defeats the intent of your law, uh, what would you do? If you can't give an answer now, could you uh, give us an answer at the next meeting? It's now uh, 11.58. I will only allow the meeting to be extended for 15 minutes at the most. En Chiang. My question is similar to the, those raised by other members earlier. You said that if the employee wants to, I mean, the employer is compelled to give him three days leave, even if the employee wants to work on one or two of those days. But what about the employee during his three day leave? Uh, we discovered that he has actually worked for another company during those those three days. In this case, is the employee in breach of the law? The employment ordinance will not stop an employee to be employed by more than one employer at the same time. There is no such uh, provision. So whether or not in the employment contract the employer stipulates that the employee cannot work for another employer in the course of his employment, that would depend on the terms of the contract. Uh, if the employee takes his annual leave or other leave, whether or not he works part time for another company, the employment ordinance here doesn't is silent on about that. So there is a conflict here. You give three days PL to the employee. On the first day, he may be with his wife, and then the wives uh, say the aunties, mothers, and sisters may be there to take care of the wife, and the husband doesn't seem to be of much help when these people are around. So um, the company may think now that you have a child, you are showing a heavier financial 
responsibility. So the company may pay extra for him to work in the company again on top of the forfeits uh, PL pay. So he, the employee, may get uh, close to double pay. So is this allowed? But then the uh, employee may say work uh, in another company during those three days, and that's not allowed. So there seems to be a conflict here. So can you give this more thoughts, Mr. Hoy? Under the employment ordinance, for um, on leave days, there is no restriction on what um, the employer can do or not do. On whether an employee can be hired in another company during leave days or of work, um, it's really up to uh, an agreement between the employer and the employee. An employer can put restriction for on a uh, forbidding the employee to do so. Now, four fifths of average daily wages for, say, uh, work related injury leave is also four fifths, right? But for sick leave, um, again, four fifths. Then the employee, there may be cases when the employee fake sickness and is working in another company on a sick leave day. Is the employee breaking the law in doing so? Yes, if the employee provides a forged document, then it's a, a, an offence. Well, please uh, consider these carefully again and reply to me again next time. Do members have any other questions on um, the issues in the paper? CB2 1436, uh, struck 1314, bracket 04. So let's end the meeting now. And for the next meeting, we have uh, still two papers to go through. Um, one is the administration's response to the um, Legal advisor and also another paper presented by the EOC paper one four five four thirteen fourteen bracket zero six. The next meeting is going to be held on um, next Monday two thirty p.m. Uh, you may have some other engagements in the afternoon, so I don't um, I don't want to extend the meeting now. Uh, this is uh, today is Saturday. And the next meeting is Monday. We still have two more papers to go through. Now, today, uh, members, including myself, have raised a certain questions with the administration. Sorry, uh, I have a pl uh, my apology that I will not be here on Monday. And the administration may not be able to deal with all the issues raised by members today before the next meeting. So for the next meeting, we may be are going through the outstand two outstanding papers and then go by uh, go to clause by clause, or we will wait for uh, the response from the administration to to each is raised today. Now, for the two outstanding papers, um, members say may have a lot of questions and issues, and that may take up the whole two hours. I would rather wait for the administration to respond on all policy issues before. Um, going to the clause by clause examination of the bill. Chairman? I would like to ask whether there is a rule that when there is a council sitting, um, that other uh, meetings, uh, meetings of subcommittees or panels can't be held at the same time. Now, say, Yesterday, uh, we held we held meetings of the public uh, accounts committees. Um, that is still going on while the full sitting is being held. 
Well, if we want to hold further meetings, can that be scheduled on Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays when the full council meetings are held? Well, the PAC meeting yesterday was a closed door meeting, um, attended by seven members. So that won't have a major impact on the quorum for the full council meeting. I don't know. I have to seek the views of the legal advisor. My uh, feeling is that that can't be done. I don't know whether there will be filibustering for this um, committee meeting, and I don't want the filibustering at the full council meeting to um, sort of delay the progress of other committee, the work of other committees. So looking through the rules of the council, it seems that uh, the uh, meetings of committees can be held at the same time when the full council meetings are going on. So that happens in the past. So that can be uh, an exceptional measure under exceptional circumstances. Ms. Quatt, next Monday at 2.30 p.m., uh, IT panel will be held. I'm a vice chairman, so I can't be here. Now, as f uh, to whether the two papers will take up the whole two hours, I, I'm not sure. I would like to hear the responses from the government on issues raised today. Should we wait um, for that and then do it at one meeting at one go? Well, I have great difficulties in choosing the right time um, for the meeting, and and it's it's been difficult for me to come up with this time slot on Monday. So I hope that uh, the, the administration can give us a response to the issues raised today and next Monday. And I still want to stick to the meet, scheduled meeting on Monday. Uh, in fact, um, I'll be having meetings seven to eight hours on Monday, including two sessions of the PAC. Chairman, five of us are here, and Kenneth Chen said that he can't be here. And then three members are also members of the IT panel. Well, don't you know that we have a total of 22 members for this bills committee? We can't m accommodate everyone's needs. But this is something really beyond my control that all the meetings are held on Mondays and Tuesdays. This is something that I really can't control. I hope that you appreciate my situation. Meeting closed. I respect your uh, wish. But I think it's a waste of time because if we can't get any response from a meeting, then we are, we're going to ask the same question again in the next meeting. Meeting closed.